again. <laughs> so let's see. How are you? You know, it's making some kind of weird noise like gremlins. Can you hear that? Yeah, I'm hearing crackling, but it wasn't doing it earlier. So I'm not, maybe it's better now. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, oh, oh no. Yeah, so as you talk, it gets crackly. Hmm. hmm. You're cracking me up. <laughs> <laughs> no, like this me? What is this? It's crazy. Uh, no, like now it's not. It does sound like gremlins. Oh. Let me mute for a second. Let me mute and then you talk. Okay, try that. Okay, testing, testing. I don't hear crackling on my end right now. Okay. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I know, and when we weren't, like when we were testing earlier, it was fine. Why would that? Yeah, nothing was happening. Technology, I'm telling you. <laughs> that is crazy. Let, I, I'm going to, um, hold on. Okay. Oh. <laughs> so I don't know. I'm gonna try to talk through the gremlins. Okay. Maybe the gremlins <laughs> will give up. Maybe it's something about the nighttime. It's uh, it's a little after 11 p.m. here in Tanzania, so yeah, maybe maybe they just don't like. Yeah. Maybe lower bandwidth, or a bunch of people are watching uh, down whatever they call it streaming. Good movies at this hour? I don't, I don't know. It may be because I know that at, um, after a certain time, a lot of people are able to get more bandwidth. So they may wait until the nighttime for that. Yeah. But the gremlin sound is like, it's hilarious. But anyway, so I hope it's not annoying to our listeners. It's like you have a but, voice modulator on. I know, right? I, I, I kind of like it, but also we'll go ahead and get started. I wanted to say um, again, thank you for like, this is short notice. I know you're very, very busy. Um, so I really appreciate your time today. Um, so um, my name is Stacey scott Saki. I am a director of AIM Tanzania, which is also uh, called Africa Integrative Medicine. We do projects in support of healthcare, education, and community development. I am from Birmingham, Alabama. I live in Tanzania. Uh, Arusha, Tanzania is where we do our projects. So, uh, Ms. Linda Jacobson is with us today to discuss our partnership with We So Love. Um, and so I'm going to, you know, ask uh, questions and Ms. Linda is going to answer them. And um, I hope you can hear over. And it stopped. So <laughs> I guess when, when I ask the questions and then, you know, you answer everything will be fine. So um, it's OK. I'll go ahead and get started. OK, so um, again, thanks so much for agreeing to do this on such short notice. Um, and I'll explain how we met as well before we start into the question. So um, actually, it was a friend, level friend who told me to come to one of your sewing classes. So that was uh, Miss Annie of Bib and Tucker Sew Up uh, in Birmingham. And um, she just said, tell the girl to get over here. So I was like, well, when Miss Annie tells you to do something, you just do it. So I did, right? Uh, I went over to Huffman Baptist Church and I saw um, you guys were just setting up one of the rooms, I believe, and you were about to eat some Chick-fil-A and invited me for lunch. So um, 
but I just fell in love with the space and the people who were there um, and, and your mission. Um, so that was my first introduction to you guys. I didn't know why I was coming there. I was just coming because I was told to get over there. So <laughs> if you didn't know that story, right? <laughs> um, so if you could, uh, Linda, tell us about We Feel Love. Um, where do you work? How many people are on your team? And what do you make? Like, who do those projects support? Okay. Um, we are, well, initially we were uh, a group that met and um, we were trying to get rid of some t-shirts. There was a big mountain of um, cast off t-shirts that people weren't using anymore. So we made some underwear and I knew of a hospice center for children in Haiti. And so, uh, and they had a big need for underwear. And so we went ahead and we converted the t-shirts into undies. I think our first batch sent was about 500 pairs. And I really wish I would have grabbed one just to show you. I mean, they were just so tiny, just a little, little bitty mm -hmm. underwear. And um, we, you know, it just really touched our hearts when we got feedback from the field on the impact that had. And we got pictures, the kids, their smiles. You know, these children are very, very sick, uh, but they had the happiest smiles on, happy to model their underwear. Uh, they were very colorful, <laughs> you know, we were mindful to put um, cute things, you know, uh, t-shirts that had cute designs and things like that. And then uh, mm -hmm. frequently each piece of the underwear had a different color. So just lots and lots of color, happy. Anyway, um, well, then word got out and um, we got more t-shirts and the, the Bible study group that I had started working with they went to their pastoral staff and got permission for us to move into one of the rooms. Um, I don't suppose they thought it was going to be permanent, uh, but <laughs> it was one Sunday school room. And we very quickly outgrew that. Pretty soon we had a wing um, in the building. And since then, we now have like two studios, uh, which are wonderful. Um, we, from there, another church has started a group just like this uh and that's called pawnee missionary baptist church and mm -hmm. then um about two years ago now uh liberty baptist church or liberty church i guess it is um it's a mission oriented church uh, and basically what's happening is uh, churches with space that's unused currently are mm -hmm. uh, just opening their doors up and doing a lot of in kind support for the We Still Love ministry. And what we are doing as women is trying to just use our time and our talent and all the resources that once we raised our hand, um, they started pouring in. People are incredibly generous. Anyway, and so whatever pours in, uh, we are trying to stay connected to uh, groups who are traveling outside the U.S. or inside the U.S. that would be able to come to Birmingham, pick up what we've made, and then take it. So we don't ship um, unless, you know, someone's got funding for it. But we are 100% donation. We don't have any paid staff. So everything donated is 100% uh, ends up blessing somebody uh, down the line. In the meanwhile, we get blessed because a fellowship that happens, um, you know, as women, we tend to need that fellowshipping time and uh, share some of our struggles and things that are going on in our lives with other women. And this kind of a activity really lends itself well because our hands are busy. We're doing something that we feel is valuable and at the same time building friendships and, you know, just being able to touch base with each other during the pandemic. It was really critical. There were so many women who, and in fact, additional women who came <laughs> to participate, mm -hmm. um, because they were feeling really isolated and wanted to be part of something uh, solution oriented, I guess would be a good way to put it. Um, mm -hmm. Now with you, we've gotten really excited because you were teaching women their sewing skills. And so for us, that's exciting. You know, we can, like we have sent the uh, mom and me packs. And I don't know if you mm -hmm. happen to have one with you. I don't. <laughs> no. <laughs> but, yeah, um, I think that kind of developed from that first time when you came down with Miss Annie and we were 
I'm not sure who we were making them for, but you saw the backpack and you were like, hey, those would be fantastic. And I think I happen to have some blankets and some baby things. And one thing led to another. And now we sort of have a formal uh, pack, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. Although we're always willing to be flexible and whatever the new need is. Um, but anyway, out of, out of that meeting, you know, kind of came, uh, I think a different kind of partnership than we really have with anyone else where the women here in the We So Love Network are really excited about, uh, I guess, a hand up. So how can we help the women get to where they're wanting to go with their newfound skills? Um, you know, and I know there's, you. at some point, you'll probably talk about the new little initiative coming up. And I was with the ladies today and they're very excited about their part in it. Um, yeah. So anyway, I don't know. Um, I would like to have like an, a real specific help, but we have people in other states who feel part of the We So Love Network. So um, mainly, I think what it means is they like the ministry, the idea that um, we're going to use uh, donated supplies, t-shirts, clothing, and upcycle it, and then send it forward with a team of people who are going to be ministering to the needs of someone somewhere. So mm -hmm. uh, we have people in Minnesota, Iowa, uh, Florida, and California, Utah. Uh, I think that's all of them. And, uh, you know, we have, I don't know, a couple hundred people, maybe. So it's mm -hmm. small in a lot of ways, if you think globally. Of course, I haven't counted you and your crew and in you know, Uganda. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, and you know, it's funny that um, the way that it feels, you know, the, the camaraderie and, you know, the, the, the fellowship and the sisterhood is what it feels like, you know, even though sometimes the husbands pop in, you know, it's mostly women. <laughs> um, but it, it reminds me of being in Girl Scouts. Like, so I feel like I'm at home when I come home and it's, I just come to the church and then it's like, hey, what is everybody doing? What is this new so everything? What do you have in the room? And, you know, so I, I, I feel like it almost puts me back to childhood when um, I was doing things with the Girl Scouts. I was always looking forward to getting, you know, getting some kind of training. So it's just the most fun thing. So. I really appreciate everything that you are doing, not just for us, but just, you know, things that go out to so many different places in the world and you make some of the cutest things. And I just, yeah, there are just so many things. Like I, I wish I could take more things when I come, but I know like there's this issue with weight and, you know, going back and forth, but yeah, the whole thing, like some only everybody on the flight that you're on would be willing to let you use their suitcases. You know, we could really. Okay. <laughs> I would take back so many things, but you know, that's how it goes. But a lot of people, you know, ask sometimes, why do you bring things from the U S that why don't you just make them here? So I have an answer for that. First of all, we're, we're not, um, we, we bring them with us in the luggage. So it's not something extra, you know, what, what, when we're giving things back. And the other thing is that it means so much to have like a global community connected to helping each other. It's not just about, oh, give me $10 and I'm going to buy some thread and I'm going to give some fabric. It means so much even to the women here to know that they're connected to these these ladies who do something like them that care about them and that we're sharing skills from like people who they've never even touched so it means when you're not associated with a project like this you don't really understand so i i wanted to explain it that way it's like well why don't you just go to a shop and buy a dress no no it's not about that because too the dresses the things that we get from you one dress would be the equivalent of about fifty thousand, you know, twenty five dollars is twenty five USD. It's fifty thousand Tanzanian shillings. It's one dress that we get from you. So that fifty thousand, um, fifty thousand Tanzanian shilling 
basically somebody's salary here on average is about 150,000 T shillings per month. So you can imagine what that means now that I've got this beautiful, I wouldn't have been able to afford that. And the way people feel about things like that, it's just, it's, it's very difficult to explain. So I, I just wanted to, unless you experienced it firsthand. So I just wanted to say that. Um, first of all, thank you for that. You know, it, it does like when they see the things that you've created, they get really excited. Like, I want to learn how to make this too. When can we see the video? So um, that we're able to do this now uh, really means a lot to me as well. Like uh, the technology has improved, even though we have the gremlins in the background, that now when you're doing like tutorials in Alabama, if they're recorded now that I can share them with the women. And that even makes them feel even better about, you know, like I'm a part of this global thing. So, um, yeah. And, you know, <laughs> before the crazy global pandemic, we had already begun to talk about establishing maybe like a monthly online gathering where the women here could come and we'd be in a conference room and connect with the women there trying to figure out our time zone differences. But just to build that global community and not feel quite so isolated, because there is something really nice about seeing something and you know, we'll get pictures. We always, well, it's like, send us pictures. We want to see the kids and, and the things or the mamas with their babies, uh, you know, because most of us would love to just snuggle a baby in one of those kimonos and we <laughs> were all old ladies. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. you know, and I think it's not about the pridefulness of I made it. It's about, I just want to see joy. I, you know, that hopefully the effort put in because most of us face it, our homes have turned upside down and our lives are upside down, um, but we're happy to do it if the end result is that it's brought joy to someone. And so when we get to see a picture or hopefully if we can kind of resume our idea about doing mm -hmm. video, either video blogs, blogs with each other or something, you know, a modern version of a pen pal, um, yeah. just connect. Yeah. And, you know, and I think the thing about this pandemic that has come out of this pandemic, that technology has improved in all of these different applications, right. you know, so that possibility is like we're right on the cusp of that, you know, being able to, you know, happen. So I'm I'm excited about that because we already talked about it. So it's just a matter of implementation. We were, we were <laughs> at the actual cusp of something new. We just didn't know it. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. So <laughs> this is going to be really cool. So I'm I'm excited about that because, you know, as with other places around the world, the pandemic basically like squashed everything for us. Um, and so we're just now, you know, we're in month. What is this? The fifth month or sixth? Oh, we're in the sixth month, and we're just like picking up things, you know. Um, so you know, I'm just happy to be here. It's <laughs> um, yeah. Um, so I know this question, but um, how long have you been uh, sewing and where did you get your training? What's your favorite thing to sew? Oh, my gosh. Um, so <clears throat> my mother uh, was a we were we grew up very, very poor. And so my mother used sewing to clothe us. She would actually get uh, hand me downs from other people and then remake them into clothing for us. So I grew up actually in the clothes, not these exact clothes, but, but you know, the same idea. Um, and so I, the sound of a sewing machine running at night is a comfort noise for me. It'll put me to sleep in a blank. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Stay awake at the sewing studio. <laughs> I love the sound. I mean, it's, it's a heart sound for me. Um, and so really mom started us sewing really young. Uh, there were seven of us. So, you know, you got some workers. You might as well, if you can. And she was very, um, particular. So, uh, I can remember at one point I had cut out, I had laid the pattern out and she said, yes, that's right. And then I cut it out and I had unpinned everything and she came back and she put the patterns back on and she's like, well, you can just recut that whole thing because I hadn't followed the edge of the pattern just right. And she was very particular, but it was good. I mean, I really did learn that you save yourself a lot of trouble if you would, you know, like she'd say, do it right the first time. <laughs> 
So um, I, I think I was, she had us hand sewing at about five and at seven, we were allowed to use a sewing machine under supervision. In third grade, I was making my own little dresses for school. And I can remember there was a dress style in the 60s called the tent dress. And it, it kind of had a little round neck and then there was a big pleat right in the center front and then an A line. And, you know, I knew that mine were beautiful. I'm guessing if I still had them, <laughs> they might not have been, but I was proud of them. And so I think I instilled really early in my life, the pride in having made something for myself. Um, but, you know, then I guess when I got married and I was having kids, I did their clothes up to a certain age and then they got to a point where they only wanted it to have tags from the store not something <laughs> mom made <laughs> so, and you know it was it was a real hit to the pride but you can't fight it so I had a long spell where I didn't actually sew and then I started having grandkids so I had new customers and mm. I got back in. And in fact, my daughter out in California was the one who put me onto making uh, dresses from upcycled t-shirts. And I loved the idea. They, they were boutique dresses and she was, I think, spending quite a good bit of money on them. And it's like, mm. I can only do that. So an early seed, it, it didn't start me so long right then, but it was definitely a seed that led to, um, it led to the patterns that we use actually, because I drafted some patterns and made for my granddaughters. There were three of them. And so now you know why we have three sizes. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. so, well, you even uh, have the adult size one too. So, which is really cute. Last summer, I finally drafted one for myself because we got a mm -hmm. load of um, t-shirts that went all the way up to 5XL. That's actually one of the limiting factors um, with the t-shirt dresses. Unless you color block, you're limited by the size of a t-shirt. So you can only go so far. Um, but now we're getting uh, more experienced sewers because they've been hanging in there with us for almost four years now. And they're comfortable figuring out, okay, if I do some color blocking first, so create my fabric, and then lay the pattern on there, uh, you know, so they're getting, uh, um, we're moving along. We're, we're, we're expanding mm -hmm. our horizons. <laughs> nice. And you know, um, the sometimes you, uh, for, for just lack of access, you know, maybe not being able to buy a new dress or uh, a pair of pants or something like that, you see someone like walking around, like maybe the top is fine, but the bottom is very shabby. So it was uh, very inspiring for the ladies to see that. And they thought, oh, okay, so I can take this and pair it with this, or I can take, so, you know, it was, it was just good to see that, that. And so we started when, when the internet was working, we would go on to Pinterest and find all sorts of things. So they would go and get the radiest stuff and bring it to the workshop. Like, okay, I'm going to tuck these legs out or and I'm going to make a, a, a handbag or I'm going to, you know, take this this out of the dress and put this inside the dress. So it was just, you know, we were just, it was like, again, like Girl Scouts <laughs> happening there too. It is. It really is. It's show and tell for us grown-ups, right? Yeah. I think, um, what you were describing is exactly what the first hour or so uh our sessions when we get together um, because people will have dropped off donations or we've picked them up and we're bringing them and that's what we do we just do a lot of brainstorming we, it's like Christmas you know so we, we pull stuff out it's like hey we could make this or that and uh, it's mm -hmm. really fun I think as women yeah. we do tend to be dreamers and um, I, I would love to do a session like that where we're watching your women do that I think that would inspire our gals and maybe vice versa. That could be a lot of fun. We could be the dreamers right. as they pull. Right. <laughs> maybe when the right. container gets opened up, we all want to be there. It could happen. You know what? And we need to pray about that again. You know what 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 um Linda is talking about is that before the pandemic, it was just like a week before the pandemic shut down everything. We had been spending what, like three months? Yeah. 
about three months um, collecting things. We had at first we had a 20 foot uh, container and then, you know, getting to a 40 foot container. And we basically filled that container. And, mm, and that, it, it makes me it makes me so sad. You know, I, I just want the the madness with the I, I I won't say what I know that it is, but you know, um, with just the, the 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 craziness that we're dealing with. We it's it's here. It's been here now for a year, and we can't we can't get it because they're wanting so much money. And we've already spent. Yeah, and so just for those who um, you know, what's inside of the container uh, that we so love and the Grace Klein community. And so many donors, there are over 30 sewing machines, including an embroidery machine, some pedal machines, some uh, motor operated machines that we were going to put into the community to teach all, you know, anyone who wanted to sew. Um, also, uh, there is a ministry in, in Bea and in, in Uganda with uh, Ms. Aurora Castillo. Um, that we we went in together to put all of this together. So she has a school with over 700 kids in Uganda, and she's starting a new school in Mbeya. And basically, it had clothing for the kids, blankets, everything to start the school, furniture, um, all sorts of uh, school supplies, and then for us, school supplies, art supplies, and all the this fabric would have lasted us for years basically you know and so we had this whole program that we were going to you know we weren't sure exactly how we were going to do it but you know were we going to work with a vocational school like and turn those things over to them we weren't sure but just to have those tools available and now they're stuck like we can't even get them and so you know i'm not going to cry about it I'm just going to pray about it. Yeah. And I guess we probably just have to trust God has a plan, you know, and so when when it's supposed to be released, it will be. And the people that it was supposed to bless, it, they will be blessed. It's just so hard to be patient in the desert. Like, I just, I want to get to the oasis right now. Right. Right. And then on top of that, you know, you have to, like, if you had all these things that were sort of hinged on that being available. So now we have to be creative about, okay, so now we don't have all of the fabric that we needed. We don't have the machine. So like, you know, um, so we, we've had to rethink some things, but we've got some really cool programs starting this year. It's not like we're not going to be busy. <laughs> so, right. Yeah, we're so. Be more creative. Like how are we gonna circumvent this and still, you know, get there? So like i think you did a great job of navigating through getting some mama me kits so that you can have them in time for your big event which you know the women here are really excited about we can't wait to see how that goes you know it just always touches our hearts when we see that um, yeah. and a lot of love went into making those we had so you know the way god works we see it all the time i mean i'm always saying you know give god a blank check in the morning and by the, by nightfall you'll have seen some miracles and um, mm -hmm. so we had a gal, Mary Ramp, who just kind of on her own had been cutting up things that were coming in, even during the pandemic. Um, we were pretty much just focused on face masks, but we weren't allowed access to the building. So mm -hmm. that made it difficult for us to operate because our supplies were there. And so we could go in quickly. We had a small amount of time. It's like, you can get in, then you got to get out. And then they'd sterilize and, you know, so... She was just really diligently cutting things up into pieces for kimono kits. And as far mm -hmm. as, you know, when we, when the container left, our thought was, all right, well, now what we're going to focus on is training the trainer. So we'll teach Stacy how, the, how to cut them and how to sew them so that she can teach the ladies. And we'll put all these supplies and materials on the container. So... You know, not that we were going to say we'll never do them, but in our minds, we're kind of out of the picture at this point. But she remained faithful and cut them and had a really nice inventory of pieces. So when you called and asked, 
I knew she had been doing that because I had seen the pile and I just said, hey, Mary, um, you know, could we actually get 40 kimonos out of that? And, you know, you mm -hmm. saw we had them yeah. in a really short period of time. So yeah. that to me is just like when you're waking up and you're just doing what God calls you to do that day and don't worry about I'm more like a planner. Um, my background is project management and my, my last years were on global teams. And so I'm always looking at like, what's the timeline and what are all the things that have to happen on that timeline? And I want to live with the timeline. Uh, mm -hmm. And so for me, it's been a different experience to let go and trust God's plan. Um, and I think it's still important to have a plan, but I'm, I believe <laughs> self-assessment mm -hmm. here, but I think mm -hmm. I'm a little better about shaking it off when my plan doesn't come to fruition and it's shifted. It's like, okay, uh, we can do that. Uh, yeah, now, so it's, mm -hmm. it's different, uh, a different kind of lifestyle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and we we have to alter things constantly, and and then even more so with the pandemic, um, we've had to change so many things because our access is just so different being here. You know, it's at home. I, I say at home because this is home as well. But you know, when I'm home, home, you know, it's easier for me to access things and people. But here. You know, I'm a world away, but um, you know what? What um, Linda was talking about is that uh, we have uh, the Safe Mother Initiative, and um, you know, I did talk about we do healthcare education and community development. Um, my background, uh, medical background, is in traditional Chinese medicine, um, so we try to do things to blend uh, Eastern and Western medicine to uh, provide opportunities for healthcare and places where they wouldn't um, normally receive them. So we have an, uh, an acupuncturist who's a part of the project uh, where uh, basically the project is centered around uh, helping women to have uh, full-term healthy pregnancies. Um, you know, those who, who are having problems conceiving to help them with uh, conceiving and just prenatal and postnatal care, uh, that sort of thing. So that support, emergency support. So we had a fundraiser associated with that as well, which is totally different from this, but we were thinking where we're gonna get things off of the container for, you know, then so we wanted to do like this really nice launch. Uh, baby showers aren't the normal thing here in Tanzania. So, you know, me with my Alabama self, I'm like, let's have a party. And, you know, we're let's, let's, Care for these ladies. You know, they're not the same ladies that we had from before. Of course, you, know, you have a baby, then it's a new person. Um, so we're bringing them, bringing them in, and giving them uh, a new mommy kit. So the new mommy kit this time is uh, a little different because we were concerned about weight. The other mommy kit was like exploding with blankets and bibs, and you know, baby, um, the baby, uh, uh, the kimono and some other things. They had like lots of things in it. So this one is the cutest little pack. So it has, you know, the the cinch back that the women we thought, you know, they're carrying it as a backpack. But no, they put the babies on their back and they put this in the front and then they have this little, you know, this pouch to put their other things in. And I, I see the women too that, you know, they had their babies and whatever. So the babies are older. They're, they're using those as purses. What? So it's like they think they're the cutest thing, you know, like all the colors and it's really like so many different textures, like they really love them. And um, so the one that's coming over this time is the bag, a little cap to match the baby kimono, which is just like really cute. It's winter time here now, so it's just perfect. Um, and um, we have like some booties. So since we don't have 40 booties, um, we're going to use those um, as like a little gift. We'll do like baby games or something. So I was trying to find something with that. So the other part, instead of having um, the, the bibs and everything, what we're going to pack is like an essentials, like a nutrition pack. So we'll give them beans, um, rice, um, sugar, tea, like just to give them some things to take home. And then when they come back the next month, because the, the program that we have this year for the Safe Mother Initiative, it was supposed to be an entire year, but because of the pandemic, we had to change the way that we're doing things. So it's going to be, let's see, a four month program this year. So each month they'll come back and then they'll get 
you know, something to add. Like it's just food, but just food means a lot, you know. Um, to be able to take home rice and that sort of thing just, uh, for the nutrition component. So we're just really grateful uh, to you all for helping us with that. Um, I know the ladies are going to love it. The little party and the the um, the ones that when I was in Birmingham the last time that um, you gave me all, you, know, you let me shop and, and I took all of those dresses. <laughs> All of those t-shirt dresses. You're like, stop, you want all of those? And I'm like, yeah, I'll take them. So um, I took all of them, yeah. So, and they're here and they have all been given out. Like I don't have one. No, the, my girls, they took one each. They took one each to model for the, for the kids, but they're all gone. And um, so I put that in the um, pillowcase dresses. And so I wanted to do a fashion show. Like I, I wanted it all cute and everything. We got so excited while I was talking to the the mama um, of the the um, of the whole compound. They just took the stuff, and I thought, okay, so you're going to set up an outcome and tell you how to wear them. When I walked out, those kids, everybody had them on. The adults, everybody. I said, what are you doing? <laughs> We all, we loved it. We loved watching that. Oh, that's so fun. It looked like, like Christmas morning, maybe. <laughs> I was like, no, you guys are messing up. <laughs> right on top of their clothes and everything. <laughs> I was like, that doesn't even fit. What is that? What are you doing? And the boys were like, you know, like, no, this <laughs> Yeah, so, so we did challenge ourselves to try and address the boys a little bit. We're working on it. Uh, it's yeah. harder. No, we have a bias. We, we're we girls. And so, you yeah. know, we just have that uh, tender thing about a little girl needing uh, to feel pretty, you know. Um, and that really is one of the things, Stacy. with all of our things we make. We really want whoever gets it to be proud of it, not like, oh, uh, you know, I don't like this um it's fun to listen to the women because they'll we even have some who are like well, i just really don't like to bling it up we call it um and then there are other girls who it's like i don't really want to sew them i don't like doing that i just want to do the decorating and adding the cute things. <laughs> right. you know so it's nice that we've been together long enough that everybody's comfortable saying what they enjoy doing and leaning on someone else to fill in the gap um you know, and there's some days I like to do it all, but, but there are some days I'm just not in the mood for certain things. <laughs> and, you mm -hmm. know, there's just days I don't want to do something detailed. I want to knock out a pile of a hundred something, anything. Um, mm -hmm. there's days where I just really want to pups and do something really detail oriented. Um, but uh, something you said, mm, you were talking about when they all were getting the things out. Well, when, when they put it, it no, good. Yeah. <laughs> well, we were kind of surprised by uh, two questions, actually. But the one, well, not questions, but comments. Um, the one is we were surprised by how, you know, like understanding cultural sizes. I'm a Scandinavian, so I have a really large uh, uh, bone structure. And so you put me next to someone who's more, um, you know, French, let's say, and they've got tinier little bone structures mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we're learning about like your village and because we do we have so far sent to 15 different countries and i'm learning that i need to ask about the people group like tell me more about their physical structure because like what i think of um well for a good example those little underwear i made a pair that said it was a size two so i sent it to my mm -hmm. daughter for our granddaughter who was about 18 months old learning to potty train and she calls she laughs she goes oh my gosh i can't even get it past her knees <laughs> oh so, okay <laughs> you gotta take that into account <laughs> yeah 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 and so seeing the dresses on top of their clothes and on girls that are older than we were anticipating so then that shifts the way we um the kind of designs we would put on them you know that maybe I don't know, maybe pockets on dresses we otherwise wouldn't have. We think, okay, if a girl's like one or, or two, she probably doesn't need pockets because if she puts her hands in there, she might trip and fall or whatever. Mm -hmm. So that was mm -hmm. sort of a little bit of an aha. We're really inspecting 
that photo zooming in and trying to understand a little better, <laughs> uh, you know, and then um, yeah. I'm curious. So with that many kimonos out in the community, do you ever see them or are they mostly like, okay, at nighttime, they're going to just tuck them into the kimono and that's their bedtime wear. Or like, do they share with each other? Like we do here, we do hand-me-downs all around, you know, anybody else with a baby that needs it. Mm -mm. I, well, you know, like the, uh, what I see mostly is people keep, they keep the things because it's not like we are in the U.S. where you you think that's that one baby and that's it. You may have another one pop out of nowhere. So, you know, like we're not we're not like, oh, I want to plan. We're going to have two babies and we're going to do this, this and this. No, it's you know, it's about family and, you know, creating family. So, no, that you pass this down to somebody else. No, that gets passed down to your own kid. And um, what I, you know, their daughters when they're having babies would be using them, so they'll pass it down to the next generation because they may be close in birthing time frames. Um, no, just to the next baby. Oh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, just, just the next baby. No, not the next generation. The next baby. You finish with that. You know, um, like the um. You know, most babies here are breastfed, so they start out super tiny, but then they turn into like, Wah! you know, like they're super fat quickly. So what looks like maybe they're not fitting, they'll 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 wear that for a while. So I think like if if it's um, I've seen them do this with other things, not with the 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 kimonos, but just to like now maybe I don't maybe it's gotten a little bit too short or something. So now maybe they, they'll cut the sleeve and just wear it as like a little dress because the way that the grow is a little bit different. Yeah. Like, like the bones stay smaller. Like even my kids, I'm like, you sure are tiny. <laughs> you know, you're like the little kid. And that kind of understanding the community does help on our side. You would not believe how many times we have conversations like the women will ask me as if I've been there and I know, and I, you know, frequently it's like, I don't know. I'm going <laughs> to guess, you know? Um, so it helps us mm -hmm. to understand even things like that, you know, here, mm -hmm. um, honestly, even I think in some of the lowest socioeconomic groups, the clothing is so readily available that, mm. It's used for one child and it's like, no, I'm not keeping it for the next one because I want all new stuff or different stuff. It's not always new, but I want different yeah. for the next one. Uh, so reuse isn't like it was when I was growing up. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's different. Yeah. So that's nice. Yeah. That they are um, uh, maximizing the use of it within their own home. I like that. Yeah. Within that's their own home. Within their own home, because it, yeah, it's not it's not normal to say, "Hey, well, you you have this for my baby, no, it's for my baby." So, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. No, it's just, um, yeah, yeah. That that that's how that works. And I know, um, like the so so for the most part, um, if you think, especially that we're dealing with the the, the orphanage center sometimes. Kids don't have a, a good start on nutrition, and that stunts growth. And so, but just in general, the bone structure, like we were talking about, is more petite in frame. Um, so, just um, you know, and different tribes like are are different. Like the the height before the 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 size kids that we're dealing with, they haven't hit that that spike. So, just think of a little bit, you know, tinier than 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 what we would normally get from our McDonald my McDonald land kids hyped up on steroids. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Right. Right. But um I know we only have a few more minutes and I just wanted to um uh, talk about the um, that you we have a, a volunteer coming from Birmingham uh in August and that uh she's agreed to bring some things over. So here we go again talking about how we get stuff. <laughs> Exactly. Um, so if anybody else wants to volunteer and fly over there, we got more stuff. <laughs> I know. I wish if I find, you know, if I find somebody, you know, the thing about if they're coming from Birmingham, it makes it much easier. But I get volunteers from other places, so then we have to send it to them and all that kind of stuff. But you know, 
Who knows? Um, we'll see. Right. <laughs> All right. But um, if you could explain um, 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 quickly about what you're sending this time to the ultimate We are excited about so when I was traveling, I got a fun little message from you asked saying, hey, we're at this orphanage and we'd really like to bless the kids living there. And uh, one idea you had was for pillowcases for the kids. And so, you know, I, of course, my answer is sure. And then, you know, I just am taking time and I'm thinking uh, about it. And in the process, I'm, you know, wondering, well, how could we be like more of a hand uh, part of a hand up uh, project and still bless the kids and then everyone along, along the way. So I suggested to you that what if we were to send pieces that sewn together would make a pillowcase and your women have the opportunity to do the sewing, which to me instills the idea that they're part of the giving chain and their skills are really valuable and can bless their their neighbors you know so but maybe mm -hmm. the materials aren't so readily available and we are blessed that way so um and then so the idea was it would be a white main body of the pillowcase and then some really colorful fabric bands for the end and then um you know uh, that the white part would be available for embellishment so whether that would be kids using markers or crayons you know wax crayons you can iron it in and it becomes permanent um, or tie dye, you know, there's just so many opportunities. So I just, just threw it back at you and I said, okay, what about this? And then where could that go? And then your suggestion, which I love. So tell you tell the rest of what's going to happen to the white part. The uh, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so basically, uh, the, the kids are going to do their own designs and, and each kid, um, because there are uh, 55 in the six and below category, so they're at the, the orphanage center and the other kids go off to school. So, um, these kids will get the pillowcase and they will decorate the pillowcase in whatever way they want, and because, um, uh, from a few donations. Uh -oh. And um, a few days ago that she's, uh oh, okay, I'm back. Um, she raised some. Um, yeah, it froze. Am I still here? Now you are. Okay. <laughs> um, no, I don't know what what part I missed out. Which? Um, start with um, the kids are going to do something with that white part. Okay, so they're going to decorate those themselves, um, and they will have like a really cute, unique. It's really a decorative pillow for them, you know, so it, it also generates this thing of pride, like I made this, it's really cute. Um, and they're supposed to be getting new mattresses as well. So then they will put this on the, the bed. Um, they're just, just really excited to, you know, that's arts and crafts, it's something that they can reuse. Um, so, so yeah, just really looking forward to that. And it kind of goes back to what I was saying, how when I was little, and mom had me doing those things, that pride I had from being the one who made it. Um, I love that this is going to be the same way these kids have been included in their own blessing. I love it. Mm -hmm. That just gets to my heart. And I, I hope that you're sending us some more of those little animals so that we can stuff them because I that would be perfect for them. We just started. So we have our first child tester. Um, what kind of came out of some of that was the idea. We've had some homeschool moms contacting me wanting to get their kids involved in ministry like this and also learn sewing. Uh, so mm -hmm. serving and sewing. And so I've been um, at least, it's been a little over a year trying to figure out how do we fit children into our model. And um, so when these, what, what they are just as a background, it's a two dimensional very simplistically shaped uh, stuffed animal. And um, because they're so simple, they really will, we hope, make for a really good beginner's first sewing project. And, you know, if they're inspired, hopefully they'll continue doing it. So we mm. sent, um, uh, I think about six 
to one of the women who's new to our group, and we're super excited about having her on board, Karen. Um, her granddaughter just started learning to sew, I think, last week. And okay. so Karen mentioned this to her, and she got very, like, she's really, she was, like, ready to go right then. Uh, but I had to get back to town. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, um, we sent those with Karen yesterday. I'm not sure what her schedule is. Uh, so we're going to test it out and kind of work through some of the, there's always different things you have to do for children when they're sewing. Um, you know, so we're kind of working through a little bit of that, but, um, we do have people who are cutting things out. I don't know. We may have them partially assembled. And so some of your women might have to do that out that last outline of sewing and then stuff. But mm -hmm. we, we will be tucking some of those in there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Think, that yeah. would be really nice. Guess, guess what showed up in a donation yesterday? Giraffe fabric. Can you believe it? Nice. <laughs> Perfect. Because <laughs> that was the one animal. It's like, oh, that's a pattern, a giraffe. Yeah, that would be so nice. And, and just to have each kid to have their own toy, you know, really, really means a lot because they're 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 not toys there. They're um so just to have something to fidget with. Um yeah, and even like me, I like little stuffed animals. So even the older kids, I know they'll appreciate just you know, let's stuff this and this is my little each kid have their own thing because the I, I'm going to close with this because I know we can talk forever. You and I, seriously, we can talk forever. Yes. But, um, <laughs> um, you know, the uh, what was my uh, point? Um, oh, when we were bringing in the clothes and I said, you know, we don't really have like boys things and, you know, I don't think we, we don't have anything for size over this and um, so the, the 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 guy who runs the place, his name's Emmanuel, and he said, "Well, the kids understand that they can't. You know, maybe this isn't your day to receive. So you just have to wait so that they can all be happy for each other rather than jealous when someone else receives something." And that just like really touched my heart. Like that you can't give to everybody, and there's so many kids there. So you know they're looking. But you can tell in the picture, they were all. Participating, um, some of the, the, the ones who have kind of out, they've, uh, not again, they've aged out, but they still are there supporting uh, the, the kids as like babysitters or they're cooking or washing clothes or whatever, just to help support. And they put on the, um, the pillowcase things and they were turned the wrong way. And they were laughing like they were laughing at me because I was laughing at them because I was just going to like, no, put it on this way. I am not speaking Swahili. They're not speaking English, but we knew exactly. <laughs> you know, it's just like, oh, you know, and then one said, well, help me. And I'm like, okay, stop taking pictures. <laughs> so, you know, it's just, it's, it's really fun. You know, when we go in and, you know, just to be able to work with them directly, you know, so many kids who have, you know, uh, been put in that situation because their parents passed away from sickness, um, uh, mostly AIDS and HIV related um, cases. Um, so just to have something, you know, they sleep in like maybe four and five deep in a bed. Like it's, it's that kind of, there's a lot of kids. And so, this man and his wife opened their home and transformed their home to be able to take care of these kids. So we just are happy to be able to partner with organizations like you, um, um, like We So Love, and to also have volunteers who are willing to bring things over to help us bless, um, to bless others, even in light of this container that we can bless many people with. Um, you know, hopefully soon. And I hope anybody who's listening, I know like with Aurora, it's hard to explain because she wasn't the one who initiated getting the um, container over, but she's got things on the container. So for those who have donated to Aurora, please understand we are trying our best um, and we will do all that we can to help support Aurora, uh, her initiatives in Nambea until um, we can get this container. So, you know. 
But thank you again for everything you guys do. I appreciate your partnership. You know, I love you, Linda. So um, we will talk again soon, I'm sure, because we have to get our videos together. Because I want to learn how to make that smock. That is so cute. Great. Well, and thank you for including We So Love. It, I mean, it, you're part of our heart story. So we we are looking forward to doing some video blogs back, back and forth and participating on a face-to-face -face basis. That, that we're excited for. All of it. <laughs> well, we have to get that time thing straight, but, you know, yeah, go figure it out. And we got to get rid of the chipmunks. <laughs> oh, gremlins. The gremlins. <laughs> yeah, the gremlins. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, have a good day. And I am going to sign off and probably go like sweet, sweet dreams. Asante. Asante. Bye.